Good morning, we give you a really warm welcome once again uh, here from home in Ballymena. And if you're not a regular attender at Victor Praise Community Church, you're really welcome to join with us this morning as we worship uh, together. I welcome all those who are our regular attenders. And uh, this morning, um, we welcome you whatever means you've uh, made contact with us uh, through Facebook or YouTube. Uh, in a few moments, we're going to go over, uh, uh, go and have a time of worship. Pamela and Rachel and Andrea are going to lead us in worship this morning. Then we're going to have uh, a time of breaking bread together, having communion together. Um, Fiona is going to lead us in that. So if you're a, a lover of Jesus, you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you're very welcome to join with us this morning as we break bread together. Before I pray... I want to just read a psalm, it's Psalm 100, in preparation as we worship the Lord together. Psalm 100 reads, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God, and that he has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Let us pray this morning. Father, we thank you for the access that we have into your presence by the blood of Jesus. And we thank you even if this psalm that we have read, that we're to come before your presence with singing, we're to come into and enter through your gates with thanksgiving and be thankful to us, uh, you. And Father, I pray this morning as we meet together, even though we continue to be uh, distant uh, and, and keep our distance from each other at this time of lockdown, Father, I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will minister into the hearts of of every person that's tuning in this morning. I pray, God, that you will minister to us, you will speak a word in season, and that we will be able to worship you, to give you worship and praise that's pleasing to your holy name. So, Father, continue with us as we worship uh, and praise God together. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Now, we're just going to go ahead uh, over to, uh, and worship the Lord together. I'll be back after the breaking of bread uh, to give you a few announcements and a teaching from the Word of God.
Welcome to this part of our service where we break bread and remember the Lord Jesus Christ, his death and his resurrection. Jesus commanded his disciples, after he broke bread and blessed it, he commanded them, he said, do this as often as you meet together in remembrance of me. So as we come to communion today, I wasn't really sure what to say today. I wasn't really sure how to speak to you today. I just started thinking about God and I just started thinking about the faithfulness of God. I started thinking about his promises in the word. You know, life is life. It's not all mountaintops, unfortunately. But we can thank God that it's not all, all valleys either. Do you know, Ecclesiastics tells us there's a time and a season under earth for everything. A time to laugh and a time to cry. There's a time for new birth where we celebrate the birth of a newborn baby and there's also sadness where a loved one departs. But through it all, we can be sure of one thing, that the Lord says that he will never leave us nor forsake us, that Jesus has already paid the price for us so that we don't have to worry about our future. We don't have to be insecure about our future. We know our future is safe and secure in his hands. So as we remember what he, what Jesus suffered for us, let us also remember how he triumphed over death and hell in the grave. Let us remember how he has brought us through many trials and tribulations in our life. Let us remember that he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And let us thank God that his word tells us that he who begun the good work in us will complete it unto that day. So I thank God that I don't have to be strong because when I am weak, he is strong. I thank God that he has given me the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I thank God that he's the lifter of my head, that he's where our help, com help comes from. I thank God that he promises that he will abide with us until the end. I thank God that he is our great heavenly father, that we can come into his presence and call him Abba Father, that he loves his children, that he knows his children, each and every one of us, and that he wants us to trust him. So this morning, I want to remember his goodness, remember his faithfulness, remember his promises, and trust him with what I don't know. I thank God that I don't have to have all the answers, because I don't have the answers for a lot of things. I don't know why some things happen. I don't know. as my answer to a lot of things, but what I do know is that my God is all known. What I do know is my God is all just. What I do know is my God is all wise. What I do know is that he is the one that is in control, no matter what it looks like on the outside. So today, as we come to break bread together and to participate with thousands of other believers in this community that is called the children of God, let us be thankful. Let us be gracious. Let us Praise his name. Let us receive from him this morning and remember that he did it all for love, that he suffered, Jesus suffered and endured the cross because he loved you and he loved me and he wanted to be in fellowship with us. Let's eat bread together. So Jesus, in the same night in which he was betrayed, betrayed by his friend, betrayed by those, one that walked with him for years, he broke bread. No one was, was in front of him. He said, take it. This is my body that was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. And in the same manner also he took the cup. Then this cup is a new covenant of my blood. He knew his body was going to be broken. He knew his blood was going to be poured out. He knew the anguish and the shame and the decoration that was before him. But because he loved you, because he loved me, he did it anyway. Let's drink together. Amen. Okay, thank you Fiona for leading us in communion this morning. And also thank you to Pamela, Rachel and Andrew for leading us in worship. Uh, the announcements for the week are as follows. 
uh, right after this uh, service, 12.30. Uh, Kids Club will be uh, airing on Facebook, uh, streaming there. And thanks to Linda, Lesliana and Emma for all the hard work that they put into uh, the Kids Club uh, online. Then also at 1pm uh, on Sunday today, uh, on Instagram and Facebook, uh, Junior Study will be on, that's for secondary school children. And then Wednesday, Reflector Youth is on for 11 to 18 year olds. They're meeting together uh, with the Zoom application, that's on Wednesday at 7.30. And then the prayer meeting, uh, we're using the WhatsApp Victory Praise Family uh, group chat, and Miriam Lott will be leading that once again from eight o'clock to nine. Thanks Mary for doing that for the previous few weeks. Also, we want to thank all those who have been uh, given to us online and making contributions. Uh, if you want to set up a stand and order online, you can get in touch with us. We'll give you more, uh, we'll give you bank details. And if you want to write a check, uh, make it out to VPCC or Victory Praise Community Church and we will give you an address, contact us, we'll give you an address uh, where you can post it to. Okay, let's turn to the Word of God and to our message this morning. And the title of my message this morning is Thoughts on Thankfulness. Thoughts on Thankfulness. And um, the angle that I want to tackle this subject from is to um, uh, uh, give us three reasons why uh, the practice of thanksgiving, uh, thankfulness and gratitude is important for us as believers in Jesus Christ. Not only does God receive our thanks, but everything in the kingdom of God we engage in, including the practice of thanksgiving, has a knock-on effect. It's everything that God asked us to do is an integrated part of his purpose, uh, his plan, uh, and blessing on our lives. There's nothing stands alone. This past week saw the Indian-born Christian apologist Ravi Zacharias go home to be with the Lord. He was 74. Uh, so in honour to the uh, great man of God, I've included a quote from Ravi um, in my message on uh, speaking on thankfulness and gratitude. And, and I quote, uh, uh, gratitude comes from the same word as freedom. Gratitude is the freeing expression of a free heart toward one who freely gave. And that's a really good uh, quote there from Ravi Zacharias. And um, so the first point that I want to make this morning in answering the question, why is it important to continually give thanks to God so the first point is thankfulness leads us into God's presence. Thankfulness or thanksgiving or gratitude leads us into God's uh, presence. It is the protocol to his presence. And the verse that we uh, read uh, earlier uh, in Psalm 100, we'll uh, look at verse 4 again, Psalm 100 and verse 4, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So here we can see that uh, thankfulness is the prescribed way, the protocol uh, of how God uh, expects us to come into his presence. We come into his presence giving him thanks, giving, uh, comes, uh, enter into his gates, um, into his courts with praise and be thankful to him. And if you're struggling to uh, fellowship with the Lord, I encourage you this morning to uh, just uh, open your heart to him and start thanking the Lord for the many blessings that he has given to us. I know uh, in this time of lockdown, there's many things that we don't have that we once enjoyed, that we will enjoy uh, no doubt later on. But in this uh, time of, of lockdown, there are so many things that we can thank the Lord for. So uh, uh, um, that's one way that we can come in and fellowship with the Lord, or it's the prescribed way that we're to enter his gates, how? With thanksgiving. The message translation, uh, uh, 
which is a, a free translation or a paraphrased translation of verse 4 says, Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home, talking praise, thank him, worship him. And it's interesting we use uh, that familiar word password. We have many passwords or passcodes, especially with the modern technology that we have to deal with. And uh, we have online bank accounts, emails, uh, even if you have a smartphone, there's a passcode that you need to enter uh, so that you gain access uh, to your, uh, into your phone to use it. But what is the passcode or the password into God's presence? It's the word thank you. It's thanking God. It's coming and entering into his gates with thanksgiving. And we have, be, have a wonderful privilege because what of, of Jesus has done that has given us the ability to approach him, this new and living way that Jesus has opened up so that we can enjoy the presence of God. We have this uh, blood-sprinkled mercy seat where the judgment of God has been poured out on Jesus and, and we as uh, people who don't deserve to come and approach God have this access into his presence. But the way that, that, that we're, uh, the Bible uh, prescribes that we should come, this protocol is the protocol of thanksgiving. Also, uh, thanksgiving needs to be directed towards God, towards God. It's the Lord who we're thanking. Uh, 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 it says in that verse, uh, at the end of verse 4, it says, Be thankful to him. Be thankful uh, to the Lord. It's the Lord is the one to whom we are expressing our thank, uh, thanks. And, and the reason I make this point, that we must direct our thanks towards the Lord, uh, first of all, because he is the one who pours out the blessings in our lives, but also that you can look on the internet or and find thousands of re self-help resources uh, that talk about being grateful, uh, uh, um, uh, having a practice of thanksgiving, and all the self-help gurus talk have really in recent years promoted the practice of being thankful, and you could argue that the practice has taken the world by storm, and this perceived spirituality uh, which uh, encourages people to sit down and write down all the things you're thankful for or express it uh, some of it is also linked to eastern religions such as hinduism and zen buddhism uh, and uh, within the uh, self-help uh, books uh, really they reduce thankfulness to a, a mindfulness meditation technique to help you de-stress but it's much more than that because our thanks should be directed towards the Lord because it is the protocol. It's the way in that God has prescribed that we will come into his presence because when we come into his presence, there is peace, there is joy in abundance. So there's something missing in those who teach the, the practice of thanksgiving and leaving the Lord out. Uh, 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 the question I would ask is, who are you thanking? Who are you directing your thanks uh, for? Who is it that brought all the good things and the blessings into your life? Yes, it's important that we're thankful in our heart, but it's not just an inward practice alone. It's something that we express uh, to the, as uh, the quote I said at the beginning from Ravi Zacharias, uh, to the one who freely gave, gave uh, to us. So it's the prescribed way for us to come into his presence. We should be uh, thankful, but also the focus is on the one to whom we have given thanks. And um, so we need to acknowledge the, uh, first of all, the source uh, of our thank, uh, for, uh, the source of our blessings, who is the Lord, but also the channel th to, through which they come. And I was very thankful a number of weeks ago when I was in the hospital for surgeons, consultants, doctors, nurses, and everyone else, uh, right down to the, um, uh, the, the pharmacist that gave me medication on my way home, uh, out the door, uh, for all the good things that they gave me. But acknowledge 
yes, the channel. I said thank you many times when I was in the hospital, but acknowledge the source of all these blessings. Be thankful to the Lord. Another verse that uh, encourages us and shows us that we need to direct our thanks towards the Lord is Hebrews 13, verse 15. Hebrews 13, verse 15, and I'll read. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So notice, thanks giving is to the Lord and also to honour the name of Jesus. And it says in that verse that we're to continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, which is the fruit of our lips. In other words, we're to express verbally our thanks to the Lord. In a few countries, uh, uh, including the United States and Canada, and a few other countries around the world, they have a national holiday, uh, public holiday, uh, known as Thanksgiving, which is usually celebrated in late November. And while uh, I have nothing against that being a national holiday, uh, a time to give thanks, uh, I must say that here in this verse it says that we're to continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, giving thanks to his name. So here it's not something that's just uh, an annual practice, but something that we're to do on a daily basis, that we're continually thank God for the good things that he has done for us. So firstly, thankfulness leads us into God's presence. It's the protocol to his presence. Secondly, thankfulness gives us God's perspective. Uh, thankfulness gives us God's perspective. And being thankful to the Lord it is a practice that can give us God's perspective. It opens our hearts to allow God to give us a fresh perspective because the way that we view life and the way that we see life is not the only way uh, that, that there is to view it. And many times uh, we need uh, the Lord to just come in and minister to us and to reveal to us his perspective. Uh, especially if you're dealing um, uh, with thoughts of uh, worry and fear because we know that the, the Word of God teaches in Romans chapter 8 that if we're spiritually minded, it is life and peace to us. And uh, many times when people come uh, to church for a wee chat, a wee bit of spiritual advice, all uh, I'm really given them and many times is a fresh perspective. It's about viewing life a different way, uh, along with prayer, of course, but it's a fresh perspective. And thanksgiving, thankfulness, uh, having a grateful attitude can change our perspective and give us God's perspective. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So in every situation that we find ourselves in, this lockdown situation, even though uh, there are some measures that are easing at the moment, uh, we're still in lockdown. Well, there's many things that we can thank the Lord for. And especially when we're trying to fight off uh, worry and fear. Thankfulness can be a key. In Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7, uh, the Bible uh, reads, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So here we have uh, 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 the means by which we can uh, free ourselves and stand firmly against fear and worry, is let our requests be made known unto God. But as we're letting our requests be made known unto God, the Bible says that we are to give thanks to God. And what happens many times is whenever we're in the middle of a, a, a difficult situation, uh, sometimes we forget all that God has already done for us. Thanksgiving, when we're making our requests be made known unto God, is a way that we can have God's perspective 
because it helps us remind um, our, our, ourselves of past victories. It helps us remind ourselves of what God has already done. One of my favourite Psalms is Psalm 27. And in Psalm 27, uh, uh, David is standing firm against fear, the pressure, the responsibility that he feels. And he, in, in Psalm 27, uh, verse 1, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then in verse 2, he starts to uh, remind himself of past victories. It says in verse 2, When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, they, they, uh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. And so here he reminds himself of what God has already done. He uh, uh, reminds himself of past victories. And then in verse 3, uh, it reads uh, of Psalm 27, it says, Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though a war may rise against me, in this will I be confident. And here the psalmist David, this is a psalm of David. David is reminding himself of past victories and then it's changing his outlook. And his outlook in verse 3, he's saying, well, because what God has already done, even though, come what may, if an army will come against me, my heart's not going to fear. Even though if a war rises against me, in this will I be confident. Like the hymn Amazing Grace. His grace has led me safe thus far. That's us reminding ourselves of what God has already done. But his grace will lead me home. That's God's perspective. And I say it in, in these words. I've come this far. God has uh, looked after us real well. And there's no reason to believe he will let us down now. Because great is his faithfulness. Faithfulness, um, Thankfulness then not only reminds us uh, uh, of past victories to gain an expression... Uh, 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 to gain God's perspective, excuse me, but as an expression of our faith and expectancy of what God will do. Whenever I worked in manufacturing, there was uh, one of my work colleagues, she was always looking information for me and she wrote it uh, in an email. And at the bottom of her email, after her request, she always put the three words, thanks in advance uh, before uh, uh, writing her name. And uh, that them little words, thanks in advance, uh, is an anticipation of me responding and giving her the information she requested. And many times we as believers, because God is faithful to his promise, thankfulness, even in advance of the answer, is something that's appropriate uh, for us to do. Uh, it's an expression of our faith. Remember Jesus outside the tomb of Lazarus? Uh, and he lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Before Lazarus was raised from the dead, uh, before uh, he called him out of the tomb, Jesus had confidence and was thanking his father that he had already heard him. So, thanksgiving, gratitude, thankfulness. If there is such a word, actually, I was looking at the dictionary, I don't even know if there is an actual word in uh, the English dictionary is called thankfulness, but you know what it means, uh, the attitude of, of, of gratitude. And so number one, thankfulness not only leads us uh, to God's presence, it gives us God's perspective. But thirdly, uh, thankfulness and thanksgiving connects us to God's purpose. It's a principle that connects us to his purpose. And don't miss out the simple things in life. Hot running water. Central heating, food that you like. I like coffee and, and, and thank God for your clothes, the smell of freshly cut grass for your families, for your, uh, for your friends. I'm thankful to my daughter Rachel and to the Lord that she was able to cut my hair and she gave me a, a really good haircut about eight or nine days ago. She did a really good job. And when things work out in your favour, when things are easy, it happened easier than you anticipate. Realize that God's in the small details in your life. Invite him in 
and allow him to work. Yes, God's in the major issues in our life. Yes, God sent his son Jesus to deal with the biggest uh, issue there ever was, the sin issue. And we should be praising God and thanking God for uh, what he has done through Jesus on the cross. But God is also in the simple details of our life. The God who created the expanse of space and the vastness of the planets also designed the detail of our fingerprints and our thumbprints. He is the answer to the major issues, but he is also the God that we should be thanking for the small details uh, 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 in our life. As the old hymn says, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord uh, has done. And it's only whenever we truly appreciate what we have are we ready to move on to the next step of God's purpose for us. In the book of Zechariah, Zechariah uh, 4 verse uh, 10, uh, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah for a man called Zerubbabel who was rebuilding the temple at Jerusalem after the exile. And part of that word, a sentence in that word that Zechariah gave to Zerubbabel uh, was, do not despise the day of small things. Or some translations read, do not despise the day of small beginnings. And sometimes when beginnings are small and we don't have what we'd like to have, we can't yet do what we'd like to do and who we'd like to be, we uh, uh, we don't uh, we haven't yet become. We become come disheartened in small beginnings because we look and compare with others who have more, who can do more, and who have become more. And sometimes self pity uh, and discouragement can enter into our hearts. But we need to appreciate in small beginnings what God is doing because it is a test of our faithfulness. A heart of thankfulness proves and demonstrates to God that we understand the value of what we have received and what God is doing in our life in the midst of small beginnings. Actually, I would say it is an indicator that we are maturing spiritually and it connects us to his purpose. When our children were much younger and we had the, the birthday opening present and card ceremony uh, every time the kids would open cards from their aunties and sometimes a 20 pound note would fall out and onto the floor and the kids wouldn't be really interested whenever they were two and three years old of a 20 pound note but why because they were not mature enough to understand the value of a 20 pound note but during this time of lockdown or, uh, we celebrated Andrew's 15th birthday and when, a twin, when money fell out of his, uh, the cards that he received he uh, um, gathered it up and put it in his wallet and there was a big smile on his face. Why is that? Because he's, he, he understands the value of 20 pounds whereas years ago he didn't understand it. Could it be that God is blessing us with things that we don't appreciate the value of. There are things that even the hard times and the difficult times that we come through, uh, we can appreciate the value of what God is doing uh, in them. In Luke 17, uh, Jesus, uh, 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 there's a story about 10 leprous men who call to Jesus for mercy. Jesus uh, uh, instructs them to go to the priests uh, and it's, the Bible says as they went, they were cleansed. Now the, the priests were the, um, uh, in the Levitical law, the men who were to check out uh, whether they had been cleansed of leprosy. And only one man returned uh, to uh, give thanks to Jesus. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked the question whenever this one man had returned. Uh, Jesus asked two questions actually. He says, were there not ten cleansed of leprosy? And where are the nine? And it's interesting how that just one returned to give thanks to Jesus. We need to be people who return to Jesus, who return to him and give him thanks for the things that he has done 
in our lives because it's only in the presence of Jesus that we will see his perspective and stay connected to his purpose. Let us be like that Samaritan who returned to give thanks to God. In Psalm 107 verse 8, uh, the final verse I'm going to read this morning, it says, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. That verse in Psalm 107 is repeated three more times in that psalm. And I like the, the term goodness because it sort of encapsulates all that God is doing in our life. Even though we should be counting our blessings one by one, writing them down, thinking about the detail of it. But we can praise God using that umbrella term, that uh, term that encapsulates everything that God has done, his goodness. So in summary this morning, let us be believers who understand why thanksgiving is important because it leads us to God's presence. It's the practice that gives us God's perspective and it's also the principle that connects us to God's purpose. I will uh, go hand you back to the worship team now and then I will be back shortly for the prayer of blessing.
So let's close in prayer. Father, we want to thank you uh, and give thanks to you for your goodness and for your wonderful works to the children of mankind. And we want to thank you uh, for the many blessings that you pour into our lives daily. Truly, you are good to us. And Father, I want to uh, thank you uh, for this word. And I pray, God, that we as believers will understand the importance of uh, that, that thanksgiving leads us into the presence of God. Uh, it uh, gives us your perspective. And Lord, I pray that we will have your perspective. And not only that, that we will be connected to your purpose for our lives. Let's do the blessing now. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen.